All right, welcome back to Self Principle. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. Now, as you know, Self Principle stands for sleep, exercise, love, and food. And it's no secret that sleep is the first portion of self going on. So let's talk about a new study that talks about how important, once again, sleep really is to your overall health. This study was looking at 50-year-olds, 60-year-olds, and 70-year-olds, and they were looking at the risk of comorbidities in folks that were sleeping anywhere between less than seven hours or even more than nine hours going on. But before we dive in, let's remind all of you guys watching and listening today how important sleep is. Remember, when we talk about sleep, sleep has a sort of a washing machine function. It's incredibly restorative. It produces and regulates so many hormones in our body. In fact, if you look at one of the earlier videos I had done, it talked about where if you slept less than six hours per night, you had an increase in calorie consumption by 300. And this was a really well-designed study that showed that people's appetites would go up the next day every time they were sleeping less than six hours going on. So it affects your appetite. It affects how your metabolism is. In fact, people who end up sleeping less than six hours, they tend to gain weight. They tend to have slower metabolisms going on. Not to mention it affects things like your sex drive. It affects blood pressure. It affects heart rate. It affects body temperature. And most importantly, it affects your circadian rhythm going on. So in this particular case, what they wanted to see was, well, that being the case, how much is the link going on for that? And so they were looking at essentially 12 different diseases to see what's the impact of sleeping less than seven hours. And these diseases included diabetes, cancer, heart disease, stroke, heart failure, COPD, kidney disease, liver disease, depression, dementia, mental disorders, Parkinson's, and of course, arthritis going on. And what they did was they looked at over 7,000 men and women, and this was the Whitehall 2 cohort study, and they basically looked at sleep duration in folks that were in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, and they followed them over 25 years. And they were looking at what sort of comorbidities they ended up developing. Now, it's important to note that these folks had no chronic diseases at the age of 50 when they started to measure them. But here's what they found. Starting at age 50, for those people who were sleeping five hours or less per night, had a 30% higher risk of developing one or multiple chronic diseases over time going on. If they were 60 years old and they slept less than five hours going on, they had a 32% higher risk. And if they were 70 years old, they had a 40% greater risk. And remember, this was all compared to folks who slept more than seven hours going on. In addition to all of this, what was really interesting was that when you talk about things like sleep duration, this study, it doesn't take into account sleep quality. So even if you're sleeping seven hours, but your sleep is constantly interrupted, you may only be getting five good hours of sleep. So as you look at the results of this study, don't forget that you want to not only focus on sleep duration, but you also focus on sleep quality. And before we leave you, let me just talk about some of the most basic sleep tips that you can add right now to improve your sleep. The first and foremost is you have got to have a consistent sleep schedule seven days a week. That means you have to go to bed at the same time and you have to wake up at the same time, including on weekends. Now, I'm so used to waking up at 5 that even on weekends without an alarm, I wake up at 5 a.m. without doing anything. And usually I wake up around 4.30 going on. I like that schedule because for me, waking up early before my kids wake up, I'm able to get so much work done before the work day starts. So that's how I like it. And therefore, I always go to bed by essentially 9, 9.30 at the latest going on. The other things are when it comes to the bedroom, it's so important. You have to keep it dark. You have to keep the room quiet. You want to keep the room cool. There's some really interesting data on using heavy blankets. I'm going to present some of those studies in a future video, but you can also use a weighted blanket. It can actually help you to get quality sleep going on. And then the last thing is, is try to make sure that if you're going to have caffeine, know how sensitive you are. For me, if I have it after 10 a.m., it's going to affect my sleep. So I have to have it before 10 a.m. When I was younger, I could have it after 12 o'clock and I would still be okay. But even people who think they can sleep okay with caffeine, they're not getting the quality sleep, even though they're getting quantity. So for most people, really after 12 o'clock,
clunk, you really shouldn't consume caffeinated beverages, especially as we get into our 40s, 50s, 60s going on. And some people may be even more sensitive. Alcohol is the same thing. People think they can drink alcohol and sleep better. But once again, it's not just quantity, it's quality. And then the last thing is, is just remember, if you're going to eat, don't eat a large meal before bedtime. In our own clinical practice, where I help people to lose weight and keep it off effectively, we counsel them not to eat three to four hours before bedtime. And the reason for that is, is it can interrupt the quality of your sleep going on. And always, exercise during the day, especially earlier in the day, actually can help you have very restful sleep at night. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this episode. As always, if you got questions, topics you want to know about, just hit me up, let me know, put it in the comments, and I'll be sure to address them next time. Thank you.